So <clears throat> I'm going to go into what's going on on this pedal board. So some of you may have seen this already. This is again one of our new pedal boards that uh, is going to be releasing. This one is is 20 inches, or I think it's 20 inches by 10 inches. It's like a tad over 20. It's not quite 21, but it's basically the maximum size that can fit into the carry-on designated uh, Pelican cases for air cases. So this will be, you know, something that I can just throw my underwear and my shirts and my jeans on this thing and, and take it to, you know, traveling or take it to Sweetwater or wherever I needed to go in order to make things happen. But uh, we got some cool things going on here, so I'm going to explain a little bit of what's going on. So first thing that's happening is I did build an interface for this, and I actually showed everybody the other week on exactly how to wire interfaces like the one that I have. I'm trying to see if I if I have this guy handy up here. I don't know, maybe I didn't put it up there. But I did do a video the other week where I showed you exactly how to wire an interface. And I basically just wired the same as an effects loop interface would be on this particular guy. So right back here, I have basically what's equivalent to an effects loop interface. Because I'm not doing any stereo effects. I'm just doing wet dry. Or I could adapt it inside the Helix to actually just be mono. Uh, everything in front of one amp, or I could have it run into an effects loop. I could do it a bunch of different ways because that parallel mixer is inside of the uh, the Helix itself. So I can actually do all the parallel mixing. I can move a delay or a reverb. Now, the only downside right now with the Helix in terms of its ability to be able to do that is that you can only have one uh, effect in parallel. You can't have multiple parallel loops, in other words. So you can only put like delay in the parallel loop to come out of the wet amp. You couldn't have like delay reverb and mod. So I'm hoping in some of their future updates that they'll have that option to be able to do that. But as of now, that's not an option. But basically, so I'm coming into the rig first thing and I'm hitting the Line 6 HX effects. Then from the Line 6 HX effects, I'm doing some uh, processing on the preamp side and uh, you know some, some just like in front of the amp type stuff. Like it's like delays. Uh, like like short slapback delays. Uh, I'm doing some tube uh, driven reverb, spring reverb, and uh, you know or their model of a tube driven spring reverb. But uh, I also have inserted this. Uh, where's this guy? I've also inserted this Morningstar looper. So this is basically, and I'll, I'll bring it up on the screen so you can really see what we're talking about here. The Morningstar looper is basically like a programmable switcher without the foot switches. So it has MIDI in and it has MIDI out and MIDI through. But what it's doing is it's basically allowing to me to wire all of my pedals into this. So actually every one of these the analog pedals is wired into the Morningstar. And then I'm using the Line 6 HX effects, the MIDI programmability of that, to basically control the, all these like a programmable switcher. So basically what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to set one bank so my wires cross there. I'm going to set like one bank where these are all like, uh, you know, these are all going to be automatically switched. So instant access or direct access switches to each one of these pedals. And then, uh, you know, have my tap tempo. And then the next page over will be if I need to turn off any of the stuff that's programmed within the HX effects. So for a lot of the John Mayer type stuff, it's really going to be pretty simple. It's going to be like a Boss DM2, which is what the Aquapus is. Um, you know, some tube reverb and then maybe some plate reverb and then running into the wet um, cabinet will have maybe a little delay, a little bit longer delay or some other types of reverbs, you know, just to give it a little bit more space. And by doing that wet dry thing, especially with, with reverb, it can be really cool just to add a little bit more air, even though John Mayer is not typically doing really long repeats or anything like that. Now for the Stevie Ray Vaughan stuff, I would probably just reroute it and put everything in front of the amp since that's really the way that uh, Stevie would do things. And, and I, I posted some stuff on my Instagram earlier this week where uh, I just revived my 68 Super. And uh, I got that in a, in a, I think it was in a Bandmaster Reverb head shell. So it's you know one of the kind of the deeper heads that Fender came out with. And then I have a, um, a four by uh, 10 cabinet that has uh, black backs in it, um, which is one of my favorite speakers for, um, for super reverbs. 
or black frames, sorry, Kendrick black frames, 10 inch speakers are fantastic with supers. So uh, it should be a pretty cool thing to like get the CV sound with that. And then you know, I also got like my standard deluxe reverbs and uh, stuff like that in here that we can mess around with to get all those kind of clean fendery tones. But so inside of that uh, on Morningstar, we got a couple of things. In my first loop, I have an Archer just to kind of go for the Klon thing. This is a really great pedal, one of my favorite Klon clones um, in terms of its accuracy. Uh, I also have, a, you know, borrowed off of uh, Mason Mejia, the uh, TS-10, uh, you know, well, on a loan. Well, I, I was supposed to fix it for him, uh, and the foot switch is staying locked in the on position. So for a looper, it works fine, but if you want to take it off a looper, it doesn't work so good. So I'm borrowing that from him temporarily until I can fish one out of our uh, L.A. showroom, which is now closed uh, due to the all of the changes to... Uh, you know, the shelter in place here uh, as a national thing. And then uh, after that, we have the uh, Ultraphonics HRM. That's in the third loop. Uh, fourth loop is uh, Ultraphonics Standard. And then the uh, last loop is the Steel String MK2. Uh, and this is all going to be powered by the True Tone CS7. Now, if you've watched any of our power supply videos, and I do a really cool one uh, called how to maximize your your power supply it's really good at you know showing you how to you know have things like the situation where we are here we're on this board we have something like what do we got we got we got one two three four five six seven eight pedals here one that takes a crap load of current in the hx effects we're powering it all off of this one one spot. So basically what this video tells you about how to do is actually how to appropriately combine power on effects like this so that everything gets the amount of power that it needs and you're able to get everything uh, powered appropriately. One cool thing about the True Tone though, if you are using any of the Line 6 stuff, is that the True Tone one, even though they give current ratings for each one of their outputs, you can basically use any of them that you want and it will still remain isolated so long as you don't exceed the total number of uh, amps allowed in the entire power supply. So I think the CS7 is something like 17 or 1800 milliamps uh, or 1 1.8 amps. Um, so as long as you don't exceed that, you're fine. I measured the current at like the you know fully jacked up settings on the on the HXFX, like when it's like totally maxed out, and I think it's somewhere around like 1,200 milliamps. And then all this other analog stuff is like super low current, so there really was no no issue there. So pretty pretty handy. And the thing I really dig about this too is the new pedal board's so light. You know, like this is like this is probably gonna weigh like. 12 pounds maybe it's it's pretty pretty light in the case it's it's definitely going to be in the 20s for sure um so definitely check out that video again that's about maximizing your power supply now one thing i did do is i did have to parallel a few overdrives um that just means that i'm i'm putting two off of one uh, output and i know that on my stuff there's no problem with that uh just because we filter everything really well no issue there and i just did a video on that um it says j rocket archer icon I'm not sure why but <laughs> it's uh it's just about how to make those types of cables so if you're not sure about how to make your own DC power cables to be a splitter or to be a voltage doubler or to be a current doubler this video shows you all that information gives you diagrams on exactly how to do it and then the video also shows you step by step uh, how to do that with the majority of the provided guitar cables or sorry provided power cables that come with the majority of your power supplies um so that is kind of what I got going on right now. It's not done. I kind of just literally like 15 minutes before we started this stream, I just soldered the last cable um, and I haven't done any audio testing of it yet. So I will do another stream once I have everything going good and, uh, and working perfectly. We, I may need to add in some ISO transformers kind of depending on how it's doing with the wet dry system. You know, sometimes when you have, you know, multiple amps going, you will need those, those uh, ISO transformers. So we're going to kind of see how it goes and uh, see what I'm going to need once we, once we get into it.